All gardens are dream driven, but every now and again, the dream turns into a nightmare. The owners of this property have sunk six figures into their backyard. And this is what they have to show for it. More end of world bunker than garden oasis. Everywhere I look, it's just plagued with problems. I mean, where do you go from here? I'm in Essendon, Melbourne, to meet the Dequillas, Frank, Mary Ann, and teenagers Adam and Amelia, and to see the construction nightmare that has already cost this family more than $200,000, leaving them with the unfinished job from hell. Hey, Frank. Hey, Mary Ann. Hi, Mike. Oh, hi. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Frank and Mary Ann wanted to live here as they grew up nearby. Okay but attempting to level their steep block for a pool and garden has been a disaster. That was several years ago, and they've lived with the mess and a constant looming sense of regret and failure ever since. Now, it's time to find a way out of the chaos the previous builder has left them in. Yikes, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. I can't tell if I'm standing at the bottom of a well or in an underground car park. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Oh, golly. But pretty green. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so how about these bunker-like walls? What's going on there? We had them um, engineered designed, obviously. And initially it was a, uh, supposed to be all flattened off at the top. There was a lot to actually excavate. I think there was about at least 20 to 30 truck loads of soil that went out. Uh, when they were excavating, I actually commented back then about them maybe you know, you sure? Do you, have you done everything that you, you know you're supposed to do up there? Right. And he was quite confident at the time, saying, "Yeah, yeah, no, no, that'll be fine. We'll fix it all up." But the builder didn't, and as the walls towered above them, other cracks in the workmanship began to appear. This pool is actually slightly higher than what right. we intended it to be, and the actual house is slightly lower. Right. Yeah. So they were supposed to be at the same level. Pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that's a serious error. Yeah. You can't enjoy your backyard and you know it's there but you know it's just reached the point where you just want to you know walk away sometimes just don't look and and leave it but yeah, it's disappointing because we've worked really hard to get ourselves into a home like this and we feel like it's time for us to just start enjoying our house now rather than always um it feels feel, yeah dream is family coming together the children bringing their friends over and spending more time here and being comfortable to hang out here and creating lots of memories together. To achieve that dream, Frank and Mary Ann had to restart this stagnated process and make a new plan. To demolish the existing work and start again was simply not an option. The costs would be astronomical. But where to even start fixing this? With space around the pool limited, the entertaining area they want will have to go above it on the unexcavated terrace. What a headache. Looking out of those back doors, your eye just hits a wall. I mean, you just your eye runs out those back doors and just slams into a wall. The restrictions here are bigger and tougher than any I've ever seen. And I really don't envy the designer's task in trying to turn this into something good at all. Thankfully, they've found someone to take this project on. Landscape designer Georgia Harper has the unenviable task of fixing this and in the process, reinstating Frank and Mary Ann's lost trust in the trades. So Georgia, this is an incredibly challenging job. Why would you even take it on? You're exactly right about that, Michael. It is the most challenging job I think we've ever done. It's uh... Access is crazy difficult. We've got walls, we've got slabs, we've got all kinds of weird little engineering problems to overcome. But by creating that second layer back up above the pool area, we're going to make it all flow into one another. So it'll feel very much like it was always supposed to be that way. Well, I can't wait to be amazed. Me too. Mm. <laughs> the design solution is for a two-storey garden. The first challenge is to cover up those enormous walls with greenery and then to create some privacy with some screening along the boundary. 
This bank will then be carved right back with more excavation for more walls, though green walls, to create a sun terrace here and a circular conversation pit. All this to make this disaster look like it was deliberate. Work has begun on Frank and Mary Ann's concrete bunker. The top terrace needs to be levelled to prepare for the concrete slab that will become their entertainment area above the pool. Due to the heavily restricted access along the side passage, designer Georgia had the excavator driven in via the neighbour's yard and eight conveyor belts have been sourced from around the country to remove the remaining eight huge truckloads of dirt. It's all very complicated and, as usual, complicated means expensive. Getting to this point and hiring everything is probably already, you know, 40000 but then you add the slab on. And also the slab is uh, going to have some big piers in it to support the footing for the walls behind, so yeah, it's a very big expense because it's a huge structure. Yeah, between the paving and the pool, this area here is probably a good quarter yeah. of 100000 isn't it? Yeah. Marianne is watching every cent. You do when you've already spent more than $200,000. After being so badly burned, it's easy to let every expense and every relationship concern you. I'm worried all the tiles are going to get wrecked. No, they won't I'm get very wrecked. concerned. Once they're in, then they're fine. They're going to be full of water very soon anyway. No, we're not putting water in until they're finished, are yeah, we? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> How has it been for you rebuilding the trust in the people that are working for you? We were quite hurt emotionally and uh, we we're quite stung by that. It was an em emotional investment for us. So now that feeling of trust is part of that investment. So in every way, first time round, you dug yourself a big hole, financially and physically. How do you go cautiously now, but not too cautiously? Oh, it was so difficult. My first reaction to seeing the figures was, Forget it, let's just sell the property. Oh, really? <laughs> now seeing it all happen, it feels like it's a little bit easier to part with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the new work is already inspiring. Simply starting the render on the pool reveals promise in a space that had felt almost irretrievable. It's really hard to work out what it is that's changed, why it just feels so different. All I can put it down to is that gardens are about people. There was no one here previously, it was uninhabitable. And yet now it's full of people and it's full of life. This situation could have been avoided altogether. There are other ways of handling steeply sloping blocks. I've come to this garden in Sydney's Seaforth to show that the steepness of a block can be embraced as a design opportunity. What excites me about this garden is just how cleverly a really, really difficult slope has been overcome. These spaces halfway down a precipitous drop are really lovely. But they didn't come easy. Materials arrive via barge and a 100 tonne crane with a 60 metre reach. The rest was achieved by hand, carried by designer Matt Cantwell's team of workers. So what did you arrive to? What did you see when you first came? Well, when we first came here, standing up at the rear terrace of the house, all we could see was weeds, and they were really quite dense. You couldn't get from the top to the bottom. So we really couldn't even start the design um, until the whole site was cleared. It was an exciting opportunity for our client to have their own botanical walk, um, their own little slice of the Sydney waterfront. Matt decided to work with the slope and designed a series of small, staggered terraces created with low sandstone walls that blend sympathetically into the landscape. It's a slightly more contemporary feel, slightly more natural feel, but it provides the flexibility to enable us to pull back on the engineering side, particularly from a footings perspective. So what were the biggest advantages of the site that emerged as, as the clearing occurred? The, the natural rock forms. We've got these beautifully paced boulders which we're able to highlight throughout the design and there's a major rock escarpment a little bit further down. They were the highlight. 
The plant palette is broad, with a huge range of different foliages and flowers. Your eye is constantly drawn to different corners as you meander your way to the harbour below. It's a unique and beautiful sight, but the design takes it to a whole new level. You could have just left this slope the way it was. The drama of the rock faces would have been a beautiful background, but doing so would have meant that there were none of these arrival spots, none of these destination places, and they're critical to the success of this garden. Back in Melbourne, work is continuing on Frank and Mary Ann's garden, but progress is frustratingly slow. While the top slab has been laid, more bricks are needed for the new retaining wall above. It's a tough slog for landscaper Matthew Natoli. It's a logistical nightmare. I mean, one block usually takes you half a minute to lay from the pallet out, whereas this is taking nearly five, six minutes to get it from the bottom just to the top before you even lay it. Everyone's got to realise when they've come here, it's going to take three to four times longer than what it should to get this job over the line. But their dedication hasn't gone unnoticed. Frank has a newfound trust in the trades. They communicate a lot better, and when they say that they're going to do something on a certain day, they actually do it. That's the biggest difference. Yeah, everybody's happy, you know, and even we are. Despite the change in mood, there's still one part of the job he's most looking forward to. The end. <laughs> I want it to be finished. Yeah. Designer Georgia has returned to check on progress. Hi, Georgia. How's it going? Oh, yeah, it's good. Good. Lots of work being done. Dark careful. Oh, wow! I get to see the this light. looks amazing. She is. Lots of space up here now. Yeah. It's great. It looks so much bigger, doesn't it? Frank and Marianne finally have something to be positive about, but there's more bad news. The walls must be built higher than anticipated, which means more concrete fill. So that's an extra cost? Just on that truck. What's that worth? Thousand bucks, max. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Without the added height, they're actually at risk of a landslide. What we've discovered is because next door is higher than they look, we'd rather go up another course at least just to catch that water if there's a really heavy downpour. Otherwise yeah. it'll just come over the wall. Yeah. But that's a small thing in the scheme of things. Georgia is constantly reminded that these walls are somebody else's work, work she's building on top of. They're all shonky, they're all over the place. So there's big, big discrepancies in the angles, nothing square, nothing straight on from anything else. Unfortunately, they're holding a massive load behind them, so all we can really do is make them look a lot less offensive. That's no easy task, considering the budget concerns and Marianne's reluctance to add too much greenery. All the low maintenance plants, right? Oh, yeah, that's the ones. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't see Frank coming out with a hedge trimmer. <laughs> yes, he can. He does all the house cleaning as it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These monolithic walls continue to dictate almost every decision here, and Marianne is fast realising where she went wrong. Why didn't I just have a flat piece of land? <laughs> but no, we, did, we don't, so we've just got to work with what we've got. But even that could soon become impossible. Now, what's this? Even since I've been here, that wasn't there. Like it's, and it's getting, like, it's getting thicker. I wonder what it is. We have a... <laughs> we have a mystery. A mystery that's about to unravel their plans. Despite some progress on the seating area upstairs, work has ground to a halt. George's mysterious discovery is now on show for all to see. Oh yeah, there's heaps there. It hasn't come as a complete surprise to Mary Ann. Well, um... It's something I've noticed for a while, but didn't think much of it because I thought it was 
just something that happens with bricks and cement, but there's efflorescence on the pre-existing retaining walls. Efflorescence being salty deposits that form on the outside of concrete walls, making them impossible to render. Oh, I thought it was, oh, more money. Oh, no. The major issue is, OK, how much is it going to cost? About seven grand. Hmm. Left untreated, efflorescence will eat away at the surface of the walls and the structural integrity could be compromised. Mary Ann has had to call on specialised cleaning experts to rectify the problem. So it's just frosting up. It's really quite thick. Yeah, so the water's definitely pulling this all out. Technical manager Rick De Jong is surprised by what he's facing. So this is one of the worst cases of efflorescence I've seen. In fact, you could use this on your fish and chips and uh, it'll salt it up just nicely. Very salty. It's certainly leaving a bad taste in the mouths of Frank and Mary Ann. It appears the walls were never properly waterproofed on the soil facing side. The issue that we have here is basically that the, the membrane is either not there or the membrane has holes in it and then it will spread and migrate through all the stone. But um, there is always a solution as long as you look for the silver lining in the dark cloud that seems to be in front of us. The solution is green acid, an alternative to hydrochloric acid that removes the salt deposits from the masonry and prevents water from penetrating through the walls and crystallising on the surface. Basically, all we're trying to do is create a nice dry key that maintains its dryness so that the render won't fall off. After the acid is applied, the walls are washed down with water. A sealer is then used to protect the walls for the future. Unfortunately, the treatment will set the project back a month. Will this be the end of Mary Ann's wall saga? No, I'm expecting more... more unplanned things to happen. Nothing's going to surprise me uh, anymore because I just can't get any worse. I'd like to think that with a bit of good luck that's well overdue, Frank and Mary Ann's dream will be back on track. It's a long two months before the project gets back on the active list. Wow, well, there's a lot more trades, trying to squeeze a lot more into one day. So yeah, <laughs> try and squeeze uh, 16 hours into eight if you can. With the efflorescence no longer a problem, the base render is going on. The upstairs terrace is almost complete and there is finally some plant life in the shape of lily pillies and strapped leaf natives. I was so excited. All I could see was just greenery everywhere and that's when it turned for me. That's like, all right, this now is what I always wanted. I just wanted greenery all around my house. It's been quite a while since my last visit, so I'm eager to see the transformation for myself. G'day. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. It's so different. I just love the fact that greenery has a way of confounding your sense of all the edges, you know, just soften. No, it's more than just softening. It, it just means that it, it kind of veils all of the hard edges, doesn't it? Absolutely. Upstairs, the space feels surprisingly big. While the boundary fence provides much needed privacy, the transparent fencing still leaves it feeling open. Surely, with these results, Frank and Marianne are starting to de-stress. Downstairs, the impressive display of bamboo goes in the ground. Already six metres tall, it will provide instant gratification. Nothing else will give you that kind of height without taking up a whole lot of lateral space. So you get dramatic screening value without all the width of a shrub or a tree. But how will the monolithic main walls be disguised? So we're working on some spotted gum decking, which is going to be fitted to the masonry wall just to break up that massive concrete that's out there. So this will sort of make it look really, uh, really sort of natural in there. It's a simple yet effective solution by designer Georgia. What she's chosen to do is to use timber of different sizes and thicknesses to create this kind of 
palisade, this, this vertical striping effect, which across this centre section here will then just turn into the swimming pool fence and then continue on the other side of the wall. It's really quite clever. Georgia has convinced Marianne and Frank to go green on the adjacent walls. She's chosen a utilitarian mix of olive trees, lamandra and ficus pumila, or creeping fig, to fill the wall-based plant beds. Will you trim those up? Are you kind we of will. wanting it we'll, trunky and yeah. stemmy? Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, will. Right. We'll kind of almost semi espalier it. Yeah, because otherwise they could just end up almost like shrubs, couldn't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly mm -hmm. right. So Marianne and Frank have made it absolutely clear that they're not gardeners at all. So George has been really restricted to using plants that require almost no grooming at all. They're not zero maintenance. There's no such thing as a zero maintenance garden. But certainly they're not requiring any kind of exacting interaction to succeed. Though succeeding here has obviously been George's goal since she began work five months ago. Now the goal was to make all of these mistakes cumulative mistakes look like they were deliberate from the start. Yep. Do you feel like you're on track to do that? I do. The ghost of it is there. It's nearly, it's nearly there. And when we put the finishing touches on, I think that'll make the big difference. I get the impression that Marianne and Frank are somewhat haunted by the experiences that have brought them to this point. Definitely. How long do you think it will take them to exercise those demons? I think the process is already underway. I think what's been really heartening to see from my point of view is each time I come to site they're so excited that things are happening. People are turning up and they say they will. I think by the time they're swimming in summer the whole thing will be a, a nasty memory that'll just go away. I really like how the garden so far is starting to lose its self-awareness, its self-consciousness about error after error. It's starting to feel like it's coming together. Whether or not we can get to that stage where it feels inevitable and it feels like the best solution for the space, it's really yet to be seen. It's 25 long weeks since Marianne and Frank made their call for help. Georgia and her team responded to that call and now I'm excited to see the results. so unexpected. You know, I think they've done it. I think they've done it. It's so much softer than it was. I mean, it's still big, it's still kind of overwhelming, but it's, um, yeah, it's friendly. What was a claustrophobic concrete bunker pooling with slime is now a glistening Santorini-style escape resplendent with olive trees, bamboo, and warm timber highlights that lure the eye. Oh, what? And upstairs is no longer an afterthought. Wow. The entertaining area is enhanced with beds of lily pillies and lemon trees. Artificial grass provides much needed greenery, while the circular seating area is the icing on this challenging cake. Hey Marianne. Hello. Hey Frank. <laughs> wow. Are you at the right place? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling relieved. <laughs> I'm confounded by you know, how much it's changed and just by little tricks and little distractions that it's just totally different. It just feels completely different to what it did. And it had to. This revamp has finally and emphatically buried the past. So this top terrace is an absolute triumph in my opinion, but it was a, a big investment. Do you think it's been worthwhile? I think it is, yeah. Oh. It's beautiful. It just seems very green and colourful and happy, you know. Well, for me, it's good to have a cleaner environment because it's just been, it's been five months of cleaning up after everything. And also, like, even seeing everyone in the family really happy because you've been a bit down for, for the last three years. No, <laughs> well, I just wanted to finish. <laughs> 
So there were some real issues about rebuilding trust. How have you gone with that? Oh, now we've rebuilt it. <laughs> uh, they've really done a lot for us. They fixed it up something that we thought couldn't be fixed. And um, that trust, yeah, is very important. Acutely important for an emotional rescue mission fraught with challenges. So have there been any sleepless nights on this project? <laughs> uh, no, we, we lost a lot of sleep. I think the, the major th sleepless nights were about, you know, getting extra funding to complete the project. But um, we got there in the end, thank God. So then, when it comes to budget, let's break this down. The initial phase was approximately... Mm. <laughs> the cost. So what you saw at the start of the project um, got us t about 200000 and then we let that sit for a few years and now here we are today and we've spent about another two fifty to get it to this point. $450,000 overall is an extraordinary investment. Look, you could buy a house with what we've spent here. But there's finally light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to have parties. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of parties, no. More work. No, just relax. <laughs> just relax. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to sit outside in the middle of the day and, and enjoy you know, my space, my private space that uh, I know I paid for, but <laughs> I don't have to pay by the hour. <laughs> and that will be a well-deserved victory for a couple that has tackled this job head on with humility and good humour. <laughs> I actually am enjoying it much more than I expected. I don't stand here going, well, there's a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't. There are people who'll say that this isn't a garden at all. But to me, the measure of a good garden design is how well it matches the needs of the owner. And in this case, it seems to be a perfect match. <laughs> you're climbing up there and you're going to be pruning. No, no. That's your job. <laughs> and I'll be sitting here with my pina coladas, just watching you do it. <laughs> precisely because gardens are dream driven that when things go wrong we're so vulnerable to disappointment or disillusionment or even despair but there's a great restoring power in well-designed outdoor spaces and even as I speak it feels like the restoration has begun All gardens are dream driven, but every now and again, the dream turns into a nightmare. The owners of this property have sunk six figures into their backyard. And this is what they have to show for it. More end of world bunker than garden oasis. Everywhere I look, it's just plagued with problems. I mean, where do you go from here? I'm in Essendon, Melbourne, to meet the Dequillas, Frank, Mary Ann, and teenagers Adam and Amelia, and to see the construction nightmare that has already cost this family more than $200,000, leaving them with the unfinished job from hell. Hey, Frank. Hey, Mary Ann. Hi, Mike. Oh, hi. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Frank and Mary Ann wanted to live here as they grew up nearby. Okay but attempting to level their steep block for a pool and garden has been a disaster. That was several years ago, and they've lived with the mess and a constant looming sense of regret and failure ever since. Now, it's time to find a way out of the chaos the previous builder has left them in. Yikes, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. I can't tell if I'm standing at the bottom of a well or in an underground car park. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Oh, golly. But pretty green. <laughs> yes. 
And so how about these bunker-like walls? What's going on there? We had them um, engineered designed, obviously. And initially it was a, uh, supposed to be all flattened off at the top. There was a lot to actually excavate. I think there was about at least 20 to 30 truck loads of soil that went out. Uh, when they were excavating, I actually commented back then about them maybe, you know, you sure, you, have you done everything that you, you know you're supposed to do up there? Right. And he was quite confident at the time, saying, yeah, yeah, no, no, that'll be fine, we'll fix it all up. But the builder didn't, and as the walls towered above them, other cracks in the workmanship began to appear. This pool is actually slightly higher than what right. we intended it to be, and the actual house is slightly lower. Right, yeah. so they were supposed to be at the same level. Pretty much, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that's a serious error. Yeah. You can't enjoy your backyard and you know it's there, but you know, it's just reached the point where you just want to you know, walk away sometimes, just don't look and, and leave it, but yeah, it's disappointing. Because we've worked really hard to get ourselves into a home like this and we feel like it's time for us to just start enjoying our house now rather than always... Um, it feels unfinished. Feel, yeah. Dream is family coming together, the children bringing their friends over and spending more time here and being comfortable to hang out here and creating lots of memories together. To achieve that dream, Frank and Mary Ann had to restart this stagnated process and make a new plan. To demolish the existing work and start again was simply not an option. The costs would be astronomical. But where to even start fixing this? With space around the pool limited, the entertaining area they want will have to go above it on the unexcavated terrace. What a headache. Looking out of those back doors, your eye just hits a wall. I mean, you just your eye runs out those back doors and just slams into a wall. The restrictions here are bigger and tougher than any I've ever seen. And I really don't envy the designer's task in trying to turn this into something good at all. Thankfully, they've found someone to take this project on. Landscape designer Georgia Harper has the unenviable task of fixing this and in the process, reinstating Frank and Mary Ann's lost trust in the trades. So Georgia, this is an incredibly challenging job. Why would you even take it on? You're exactly right about that, Michael. It is the most challenging job I think we've ever done. It's, uh, access is crazy difficult. We've got walls, we've got slabs, we've got all kinds of weird little engineering problems to overcome. But by creating that second layer back up above the pool area, we're going to make it all flow into one another. So it'll feel very much like it was always supposed to be that way. Well, I can't wait to be amazed. Me too. Mm. <laughs> the design solution is for a two-storey garden. The first challenge is to cover up those enormous walls with greenery and then to create some privacy with some screening along the boundary. This bank will then be carved right back with more excavation for more walls, though green walls, to create a sun terrace here and a circular conversation pit. All this to make this disaster look like it was deliberate. Work has begun on Frank and Mary Ann's concrete bunker. The top terrace needs to be levelled to prepare for the concrete slab that will become the entertainment area above the pool. Due to the heavily restricted access along the side passage, designer Georgia had the excavator driven in via the neighbour's yard and eight conveyor belts have been sourced from around the country to remove the remaining eight huge truckloads of dirt. It's all very complicated and as usual, complicated means expensive. Getting to this point and hiring everything is probably already, you know, 40000 But then you add the slab on. And also the slab is uh, going to have some big piers in it to support the footing for the walls behind. So yeah, it's a very big expense because it's a huge structure. Yeah. Between the paving and the pool, this area here is probably a good quarter of 100000 isn't it? Yeah. mary is watching every cent. You do when you've already spent more than $200,000. After being so badly burned, it's easy to let every expense and every relationship concern you. I'm worried all the tiles are going to get wrecked. No, they won't I'm get very wrecked. concerned. Once they're in, then they're fine. They're going to be full of water very soon anyway. 
No, we're not putting water in until they're finished, are yeah, we? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> How has it been for you rebuilding the trust in the people that are working for you? We were quite hurt emotionally and uh, we're quite stung by that. It was an emotional investment for us. So now that feeling of trust is part of that investment. So in every way, first time round, you dug yourself a big hole, financially and physically. How do you go cautiously now, but not too cautiously? Oh, it was so difficult. My first reaction to seeing the figures was, forget it, let's just sell the property. Oh, really? <laughs> now seeing it all happen, it feels like it's a little bit easier to part with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the new work is already inspiring. Simply starting the render on the pool reveals promise in a space that had felt almost irretrievable. It's really hard to work out what it is that's changed, why it just feels so different. All I can put it down to is that gardens are about people. There was no one here previously, it was uninhabitable. And yet now it's full of people and it's full of life. This situation could have been avoided altogether. There are other ways of handling steeply sloping blocks. I've come to this garden in Sydney's Seaforth to show that the steepness of a block can be embraced as a design opportunity.